had ever told me a few years ago that we would ever read headlines like these in American newspapers, I would have called him crazy. Yet here we are reading them. In the middle of the 20th century in the United States of America, hundreds and hundreds of teenage boys and girls are becoming hopeless dope addicts every year. It's fantastic, it's unbelievable, and it's terrible, but it's true. The government maintains two hospitals just to treat drug addicts at Lexington, Kentucky and Fort Worth, Texas. It used to be a rare thing for a juvenile to be admitted, but look at these recent figures. And remember, these are only confirmed addicts who have come to the attention of federal authorities. How many others are still only occasional users of marijuana or heroin, morphine, or in some cases sleeping pills? It's pretty hard to estimate. But there's one sure thing. Nobody is going to stay an occasional user very long. This is one game nobody beats. If you use narcotics before long, you'll have the habit, about the hardest in the world to break. And the dope addicts say, you're hooked. Well, how does one become hooked? The simplest way to answer that is to talk to someone who has had the experience. This is the home of Mr. and Mrs. Walter Howard. They just got their teenage daughter back after a six-month nightmare that even Edgar Allan Poe couldn't have improved on. Mrs. Howard agrees to let us talk to her daughter, Phyllis, when we explain that we could use her case to help others avoid the same mistakes. This is Phyllis as she looked six months ago, a senior in high school, pretty as a picture. Just recently, she was released from the narcotic ward of the county jail in the custody of her parents. It's hard to believe that this girl is the same as the one in the picture, but it doesn't take long for the drug habit to make anyone over. Phyllis wasn't anxious to talk about her experiences with dope, but she could see how her story might be used to help others, and she began to talk. I guess I knew about reefers. That's marijuana, ever since junior high. Some of the boys smoked them, the ones who couldn't get along, who were afraid of everything. You know, the ones with no backbone. My girlfriend Ann and I went around with Jim and Bob. They both smoked pot. That's jive talk for marijuana. And after a while, Ann and I got so that we did too. It's funny what it does to you. Everything speeds up to a hundred miles an hour. You think you're real sharp and you laugh a lot. You feel like you're the biggest person in the world. But I didn't feel so good when I came home high that night. My dad knew something was wrong, but he didn't know what. Mother was sure her daughter would never do anything bad. I'd been smoking pot for quite a while before I met Chuck. I guess he was what the newspapers call a, a peddler. He supplied the kids at school with whatever they wanted. Most of them used reefers like us, but some liked stronger things. There was something intriguing and different about Chuck. I guess I appealed to him in some way, too. Anyway, I found out later what it was about him. He had the heroin habit. He was hooked. Chuck and I started running around together, and one night he asked me up to his place. I knew by now he started peddling after he got the habit, so he could get H for himself. He needed a lot because he had a big habit. You know something about hypes? They're like a disease. They don't like to see anybody not using the stuff just because they do. Chuck finally talked me into using heroin. He said it would make him feel better. So I tried it. But I was going to be smart. Just take it or leave it. Nothing was going to happen to me. But before I knew it, I was hooked. Bad. 
I had a heroin habit as big as Chuck. I hadn't been home in weeks. Oh, Chuck and I were married, but it didn't matter very much. Nothing does. Not when you're on H. All you think about day and night is dope. How much you've got, where to get more, what you'll do if you can't get it. And then, they'd got Chuck. They had to eventually, I knew that, but it didn't matter much. Nothing did except age. All of a sudden, it hit me. If Chuck had seen the cops coming, he might have got rid of our supply. That's what happened. Chuck got rid of everything. Probably in the garbage disposal. Oh, that's a favorite trick of Hype's, when they're going to be arrested. But it left me in an awful spot. I needed a fix bad. So bad I didn't care whether I lived or died. And I didn't know whether I'd ever get another cap. In the meantime, Phyllis's parents had nearly gone crazy. They hadn't seen or heard from their daughter in months. Mr. Howard checked every newspaper story that might by any remote chance have to do with Phyllis. But gradually their hopes died. They were almost convinced she was dead. But I wasn't dead. I tried once to kick off the habit, but I was too far gone. You know, the police say, find a heroin addict and you find a criminal, and that's just about it. If you're hooked bad, it costs about $30 a day for H. Boys get the money by stealing or swiping car parts, maybe by holdups. Girls take up street walking or, or do what I did, become peddlers themselves. When Chuck went to jail, I used his contacts and peddled dope myself. Sure, I knew it was wrong, but when you're hooked, you can't help yourself. They got me eventually, too, just like they did Chuck. And when I was arrested, I was almost glad. I told them I wanted help. I wanted to try and kick it off. It was horrible. Five days, and I didn't care whether I lived or died. It feels like your skin is being torn right off you, and then you ache all over and get sick, and you can't breathe. Your nose runs, and you have a high fever, and then you pass out, but when you wake up, it starts all over again. Five days. But I was lucky. I kicked it off, and I've never used dope since. Maybe what happened to me will keep it from happening to somebody else. Oh, I don't even want to talk about it. And all I hope is that someday I can forget it. Well, that's Phyllis's story. In the United States of America, 20th century. Unbelievable, isn't it, that such things can happen? Phyllis's case is typical. Most teenagers start off with marijuana. Then they decide to see if heroin has any kick. It does. Sometimes it only takes a few days to find out they can't leave it alone. In order to get money to buy it, they turn to crime. And that's the story. There are practically no happy endings when you fool with drugs. Doctors say restoring an addict to normal life is about the toughest thing in medicine. Well, what's the answer? Enforcement? Yes, that's one of them, certainly. In the Far East a few years back, they were lining up dope peddlers and shooting them in the back of the head. But it didn't stop addiction. It just made it harder for victims to get the stuff. No, the answer is a simple one. Just use your head. Leave narcotics absolutely alone. Remember what happened to Phyllis and others like her. Talk it over with your parents or school counselors, somebody you have confidence in. Some say the Reds are promoting dope traffic in the United States to undermine national morale. They did it in China a few years back. It's certainly true that the increased use of narcotics plays right into their hands. But why not show everybody, including ourselves, that young American men and women have too much intelligence to make such a stupid, ghastly, tragic mistake? Let's make tomorrow's headlines read like this. <laughs> <laughs>